yourself standing on a beautiful beach. And if you close your eyes, you can feel the sand between your toes and the warm wind against your cheek. And in this moment, you are all alone. And uh, everything in the world is exactly as you imagine it to be. You are the director of the successful prize-winning film, The World, The True Story. You are the only judge of right and wrong, and you are the mother goddess of all beings. Can you feel how satisfactory this is for your ego? How self safe you feel when you are alone with your own interpretation of the world. And then, suddenly, in uh, somewhere there to the right, you see something moving. And when you're looking, it's another human being. Someone is approaching you. And in that moment, everything changes. Your beach, your birds, your world isn't yours anymore. Uh, that thing that you called the reality just a moment ago is now two realities, yours and hers. And um, exactly in that moment, you have a choice. Either you can desperately cling to your version of the world, fighting for your trees, fighting for you sky, your sky with the color that I call blue. Or you can recognize that your version of the world is temporal and impermanent and that her world is as real or unreal as mine. The 5th of May this year, or that next year, it's 200 years since the um, Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard was born, and he is the guy up there. But um, even though he's 200 years old, uh, his thoughts are up to date. And uh, one of the things that he said that was extremely provoking in those days, and it still is today, is that there is no truth. Or let us quote him exactly. He says that subjectivity is the truth. Subjectivity is reality. But the question is, what does he mean by that? What we see when we look around this room isn't reality, according to him. On the contrary, each of us is working around, is walking around in a unique sketchbook, in an individual homemade attempt to understand everything. But to be able to say without any doubt that you understand the world, you have to be some sort of a cognitive superhero who is able to grasp everything in the universe at a glance. All the many, many micro uh, parts inside the cells and the particles and all the huge planets in the outskirts of our knowledge and everything beyond that. And even more, you have to understand all, how all these parts are including all the sentient beings are interlinked with each other in the everlasting dance of the cosmos. And as none of us has this capacity, none of us can honestly say that we fully understand. But that's not enough. Søren says that the same goes for morals, for right and wrong, for love and hate. Sorry, ego, but there are no eternal golden rules for you to follow. There are no stone tablets to lean on. There is no right way of living, no ultimate good. It's not even yours. Life is the best. 
the only thing we have is a collective social experiment and it will go on forever. Right now, you are one of the nine billion people with nine billion individual models of the world that at the same time are trying to figure out what it is to be a human being. And every single one of these persons are, according to Sorem, a chance to get hold of yet another small fragment of understanding of why we are here and how the hell we are going to handle the situation. But there is an if in the philosophy of Søren Kierkegaard, and the if has capital letters. And it says, we will never be able to put these pieces together to form new experiences if the egos of these planets, and that means you and me, aren't willing to be challenged. Stepping out of our caves, Letting the world and other people touch us, take in what they say, digest, consider, draw conclusions, and out of that, from new, form new, truly personal ideas, and then present them to others as a gift. Giving and taking, giving and taking, giving and taking over and over again. That is in the eyes Kierkegaard to be truly subjective and according to him this is the most important and the most difficult thing a human being can devote herself to you yourself and everyone you meet can be a carrier of these subjective precious fragments of understanding also that unknown person ultimate other that now is emerging towards you on your beach, scaring the shit out of your ego. If Surin was there, he would have leaned forward and whispered, don't be afraid. Don't be trapped in your subjectivity. Share it. Change the title of your movie to the world as I see it. And show it to the stranger and ask her to do the same. No, 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 only because Søren says that subjectivity is the truth, you don't have to understand everything that she says. Let's once and for all skip that idea that if you walk in another person's shoes, you will understand her. Because I have walked in my own shoes for nearly 60 years and I don't even understand myself. The, that bullshit. Don't force the other to be the answer. Let her be the question she truly is. And only because you celebrate every human being's right to have her own view of the world, you don't have to agree. But on the other hand, you don't either have to instantly oppose. Instead, celebrate the otherness in the other and use this fantastic opportunity to hike in a parallel world looking for new fragments that can contribute to your, our collective understanding of who we are. So as she comes closer, invite the ultimate other to sit down in the sand, introducing you, her to your beach, but also asking her to share with you her very personal, subjective view of the waves, the trees, and the birds, keeping in mind that both of you, as well as all of us, in this room and in the world, are sailing on the sea of everlasting insecurity. Thank you. <laughs>